All right, let's make this mate floppy. So I'm going to pull out a circle sprite. I'll add a circle collider to it. I'll add a rigid body 2D. And I'll zero it out. I'll put it over here. Let's remove the trans uh, remove the opacity a little bit so that we can see and then just duplicate it like this so that they're overlapping. Like that. Now on the first set, not including the very last one, let's add a hinge joint 2D to it and set limits and we'll, whoops and we'll make the angle limits minus 10 and 10 that will that will restrict its movement so basically if we didn't set limits on this it would just completely flop around and it doesn't look too good um, so now grabbing my first circle i'm going to drag my second circle into the connected rigid body and then moving on to the second circle i'll drag my third one and so on until we reach all the way to the end and if you get mixed up and you put them in the wrong place you'll know immediately as soon as you press play because it looks ridiculous and the last one and if we just remove the mate there this should actually just flop as it is like that so if we move it across you'll see it a bit more like that that's not too fun yet though so now what we're going to do is we will write a script and we'll to, to help us render the, the meat texture on top. So create a new script. Let's call it floppy renderer or whatever you want to call it. Open it up. We're going to need a reference to a line renderer because that's what we're going to use to render this line. And we'll need a reference to uh, uh, transform points that we're going to set it to. Um, in our start, let's say renderer position count equals, and we'll set it to how many points there are. And then every frame we're going to set renderer set positions equals to our points. And we'll grab the positions out of those points like that. And then we've got to convert it to an array because that's what set positions take takes. And that should be all we need. Now let's click on our first circle and we'll add a line renderer. And we'll add our script here. Put our line renderer into the um, into the script. And then also grab all of our points and put them in the points there. Now, this won't actually work while we're not in play mode, but just to show you how it does work, I'm going to turn off all of our sprites. And there, as you can see, it doesn't look too pretty yet. Um, a way we can make it actually render while we're in play mode is we can do this on draw gizmos. Now we're going to need this two times, so let's create a new function for that. Let's just say private void draw line. And we'll take that and put that there. Now we can run that there and also in updates. And because we're actually running this position count in start, this on draw gizmos is not grabbing it. So just while we're in the editor, let's just set that. That won't run uh, actually in play mode or when you when you uh, compile your game, so it doesn't matter about the performance too much. Yeah, it's a little bit jagged on the end there, so you can actually come down to your line renderer and you can add some end cap vertices. Kind of makes it a little bit more more like a like a patty. All right, so to get our little mate texture on there now, what I'll do is I'll create a material, call it mate. I'll drag my mate onto the albedo or whatever you're using. Um, I'll make this a default sprite texture. Now on our line renderer, we'll drag the mate onto there and you'll see a few things. One, 
it's not actually going all the way to the edges here. And two, we've got this silly little thing on the end here. So to get rid of the little thing on the end, just remove your end cap vertices like that. And to make sure it goes all the way to the end of our collider here, on your first one, create a child and just call it left. Don't have a, uh, any colliders or rigid bodies on this. It's just a little placeholder. On the right here, call this one right, like that. And now on our line renderer, we have to just rearrange these a little bit. So let's restart that. Um, if you click this little padlock up here, it makes it so that you can lock to this inspector pane. So then we can drag multiple objects and select multiple objects and it doesn't turn this one off. So let's start with our left one. Let's put that one in first. And then let's grab all of our segments. And then finally just put the right one in. So now, as you'll see, it goes all the way to the edges. And now if we press play, we've got our floppy piece of mate. That looks pretty cool. Um, to make a prefab of this, just select the middle one, create a game object, let's call this ingredient, and then take it out. And then just pair in all these segments to the ingredient. And then make a prefab like that. Now that we've got that, we can just add a few and then watch them fall. There we go. Looks pretty cool. So you can make like a bunch of ingredients. I actually made a game using this technique. It's called Floppy Burger if you want to check it out. And I hope you learned something. If you did, thumbs up, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you next time.